Hey, what's going on? It's Bobby Balo from Rayton Productions here. Today, I have an awesome video that walks you through everything that you need to know about gain staging to make sure that your music sounds the best it possibly can be. When it comes to recording audio, gain staging is super important because you don't want to unintentionally clip your hardware and you want to also make sure that you are getting the loudest signal possible so that you can minimize your noise floor. And the same goes for if you have a analog or hybrid mixing and mastering setup, gain staging is very important because those pieces of gear have sweet spots that you need to hit. However, if you are mixing or mastering music completely in the box, meaning all digitally, then gain staging kind of becomes irrelevant, at least for like any modern DAW. And that's just because of the nature of digital audio. Anytime we're dealing with hardware, except for a very few occasions, we're pretty much limited to 24-bit audio, which has some very specific features. Namely, we have 144 dB of headroom, and we cannot exceed 0 dB full scale. If we go above that, we are going to clip our audio. It's going to sound distorted and sound like crap. And that's just because most converters are 24-bit. In fact, almost all of them are. So the clipping will occur only in the final stage of your DAW when you're sending the music out to speakers. So if you exceed zero, you're going to get clipping and then you're going to hear some distortion. So how come the audio doesn't distort when you're working with it in a session and it does when you're sending out to your speakers? The answer to that question is that the DAW is changing your audio files from 24-bit and processing them at 32 or at, in some cases 64, maybe even higher which effectively gives us even greater headroom. And there's something magical about 32-bit audio where zero dB full scale is no longer the limitation. It actually goes much beyond it. And in fact, there's people online that say it's impossible to clip your DAW when you're gain staging because it's in a 32-bit format. But that doesn't really sound realistic. So I made this video today to see if it's possible to clip our DAW, give you some practical advice, on gain staging in the digital domain and find out if there is a limitation to the amount of headroom we have when we're mixing and mastering stuff digitally. And since we're gonna have to do a little bit of experimenting today, you know, I figured why not safety first? All right, so we're in Cubase. We're gonna do some deep diving and figure out what is actually going on under the hood of Cubase and if we can clip it. This track is by my buddy, Brian Burstinski. So if you like what you hear, definitely go and support him. He is a great guy. Okay, so this is a 24-bit file. We can verify that by loading up the pool. Uh, we can see right here it's 24-bit, which means that it, if we go above zero, we should be distorting it or clipping it to some degree on the output. Let's just crank this thing up and see how loud it can get and if it distorts. I don't really have a great way of increasing the gain that much, but I'm just going to use a bunch of uh, EQ plugins. <laughs> So I have to turn my audio down because it is so loud right now. But you can hear it, right? You hear the distortion, it's clipping. Okay, we're like 18 dB over zero right now. So this tells us that if we go over zero, we're definitely gonna be clipping on the way out to the speakers. If this is actually clipping internally and it's not on the way out to the speakers, then the damage should have already been done and we won't be able to reclaim those clip transients. But let's turn the volume back down 24 dB and see if the audio is clean. Sounds pretty clean to me. So there aren't any distorted artifacts. And actually what we can do is render it at 24 bit. So we're going up 24, clipping it and then bringing it back down. If it's exactly the same, these will null if we invert the phase of one. Let's just verify that, that they're exactly the same. I don't hear any sound. And my meter shows zero audio. So that is a way that we can experimentally show that internally something is happening where the audio is no longer 24-bit. And again, that's because we went beyond zero dB it should have clipped and been damaged. And then when we turn it down, it should have stayed clipped, but it didn't stay clipped. And there's also a really easy way to do this. So let me show you a simpler way that you can do. You can put a plugin called Bitter. It's a free download. I'll have a link in the description, but this will tell you the bit rate of the audio file. Okay, so if we put Bitter on the channel, 
you can see it's 24 bit. Okay. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because I just showed that it couldn't be 24 bit because it's, it went above zero and we could turn the gain down without any distortion. Well, what happens is, is your files don't instantly convert to 32 bit. They actually only change when you make any adjustments at all. So if we come here and we turn this up by 0.1 dB and we can put bitter after it, we can see that this plugin is now going to break the 24 bit file and it's going to be 32 bit. So let's look. Look at that. It goes in 24 bit, gets processed by this EQ. So any adjustments in a DAW will do this. And it's now 32 bit, which means that we now have way more headroom and we're not going to clip if we exceed zero unless it's going out of the speakers in the final output stage. Okay. But internally now we're, th we're in the 32 bit domain and we have a ton of headroom that deserves a sip of coffee. And if you don't know, scientists love coffee. And if you don't know, I'm also a scientist. <laughs> Let's see if there is an actual limitation to the amount of headroom we have in a modern DAW. So this is probably going to suck, but we're going to go for it. So I'm just going to keep on increasing the gain until we are basically at like a thousand dB above zero. And uh, we're going to turn it down at the same time. So don't blow your speakers up and cause like a black hole or something. Um, but we're going to offset it and see if the distortion sticks around if we exceed the limitations of a digital audio workstation. So let's go for it. This is going to be super boring, guys, because all I'm doing is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to keep on increasing the gain until we're at like a thousand dB. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to take a while. I wonder what would happen if I hit play button right now, if the world would end from like the extra, I don't know, 350 dB of gain I've added to this track. <laughs>that sounds like straight up garbage all right so i ran out of spots so i'm gonna have to bust this to a group to keep it going so let's do that all right back to the drawing board here we go increase the gain again <laughs> If I had hair, I'd probably pull it out at this point. So that's actually not enough gain. So we need to make another group gain. So each one of these that I'm doing is plus what? 350 dB or something. Let me see. So 336 dB of gain each time. Okay. So this is also 336, which is 672. This is why we go to school. And then we'll do one more. We'll try to get it to like a thousand dB. All right. So at this point, we're at a thousand and eight dB over zero. Do I dare play it? <laughs> I'm going to stop playing it because it might generate a black hole. That's wild. All right. So now we have to do the work to bring the audio back down to a normal level. So the only way I can think to do this is again, now I need to just decrease it by that, by a thousand dB and bring it back down. All right. So let's bring it back down to reality. Here we go again. All right. So if we reduce the volume back down, I don't know how loud it's probably going to be loud. All right, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like Cubase is either like pissed at me or something. And we're going to see if we can just pass a signal through it. Cause I'm not, I'm not really so sure <laughs> it's going to let me. Okay. So we have some audio dancing here. So we, it's probably just too quiet. So let's go here and let's just start taking these off and see if we can get that audio back. Oh, look at this guys. We see signal. There it is. Let me take one more off. It's gonna get kind. It might get a little loud. It's not distorted at all. So at 
672 dB over zero, it's not distorted. That actually makes sense because a 32-bit file format um, will allow us an additional 770 dB of headroom in the positive direction. Okay, so if we want to test that, let's go a little bit farther. We'll come back here and we're just going to increase a few of these. Okay, and let's get over 770 and see if we can permanently damage the audio within our DAW. We need another 100 dB again. Now, if my theory is correct, we're going to be around 790, 800 dB over zero, which should exceed the maximum limit for 32-bit processing. And if that's true, we're going to hear distorted audio, even if we turn the gain down before it leaves our speakers. So let's, let's hear it and see what we find. How high are we going over? <laughs> it doesn't even know. I think Cubase just shuts down. Yeah, you hear that? Cubase just starts breaking. <laughs> So the meter says it's infinitely higher than zero. That's not really true, but Cubase won't even let us go that high. I didn't know that. Okay, well, that's that's a shame. So if you gain stage that poorly in your session, you're not really ever going to get distortion. You just break Cubase. So that's good to know. <laughs> so what do we learn today? We learned that gain staging is really, really important anytime you're dealing with hardware or the output of your DAW to your speakers, but it doesn't seem to be that big of a deal inside of a digital audio workstation like Cubase. And that's because if you make any adjustments to the audio, regardless if it's a 16-bit, 24-bit, 8-bit audio file, Cubase is going to process it at 32-bit. I showed you that by doing the null test. I also showed you that by using that plugin called Bitter, which is free and you can download it for yourself and try it in your session. I also tried to get the internal processing to clip in Cubase by applying a thousand dB of gain over zero. And what ended up happening is I just broke Cubase and caused a black hole, I'm pretty sure, somewhere in the universe. So I apologize for those people. <laughs> and good news for all of you is that you can just turn the gain down before sending the audio out to your speakers, and that will restore any type of audio fidelity that you have, and you're not going to clip anything internally. Something to keep in mind is that just continuously adding volume throughout your mixing or mastering process might not be ideal because a lot of plugins don't have the ability to lower the gain or if you're using a compressor with a set threshold, it's going to get slammed because you're feeding it with like 300 dB of gain. So if you can compensate the output volume of your plugin chain as you're going through or your group buses to keep it around zero or whatever volume you like, then that is gonna be a good workflow so that you have efficient mixing and mastering. Also, if you're a fan of templates, it's gonna help make it consistent every time you load new files into it. If you thought this video was helpful, please share it to a friend, share it to an audio community. Let's get the word out. There is a lot of confusion around gain staging in the digital domain, and I'm trying my best to clear up some of these myths surrounding audio, recording, home studio, mixing, mastering, all that stuff. And to help you on your mixing and mastering journey and to make better sounding music, I put together an ebook of my favorite free plugins. It covers all the different categories that you need to make amazing sounding music. So that is one less thing that you have to worry about holding you back. I have a link to that download in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time and attention today. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to get notified of weekly videos that I'm uploading. Also, we go live twice a month, so you do not want to miss that. Have an awesome rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next video.